since we are college students, people are going to go, oh, they have a year left in school. Like, what are they really going to do? What we've been able to do as college students up till now, some startups never reach, and especially in the time we have reached, the fact we're in college doesn't mean anything. We're going to make it work. And so if you think of your home, think about the placement of light switches throughout that home. So if we make every single one of those light switches, not just a light switch, but a data point in that home, a data point that can control the lighting in that room, that can get any type of sensor data you want for that room, that can act as a point in the mesh network, you're creating a mesh network across a home that is so strong, that is so fast, that is has the ability to optimize that entire home. You're making a system that's never been made for through the light switches. You understand that there's a, there's a level where you say, honestly, just screw everything else. I'm gonna make this work. And that's the point we're at, and that's the point I'm at, and we'll continue being at until this company is as successful as it can be. Welcome to another episode of Forging the Future. And today we have an exceptional guest, Addis Lujenovic, a chemical engineering major at Texas A&M and the co-founder and CEO of Switchless. So Switchless is an innovative smart home company specializing in smart switches designed to make any home a smart home through smart lighting and room-specific data built on a private network. Addis, it's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thank you so much, Chris. I think you're our very first student entrepreneurial guest. Really? Yes. Well, so. there's a first time for everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even 21 yet, right? Yep, so, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> one more day. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit about how you got started. You're still going to school, yes. but you have a business. Yeah, so I could go into my background and uh, my partner's background, then I'll give sort of the beginning of Switchless. Okay. For myself, I was born here in Houston, Texas, Katie specifically, but my parents aren't from here. My parents are refugees from Yugoslavia. When the war broke out in the 90s, they were fortunate enough they have the opportunity to get out of there and come here. But when they came here, they came with $20 in their pocket speaking no English and one suitcase of clothes. They the got, American dream, I guess. I guess so, right? That's what the goal was. Mm. They got thrown in some bare bone apartment and were just sort of had to figure it out. From there, they got the jobs they could. My mom worked as a cashier. My dad was a delivery driver. They, they sort of hustled for a few years. And my dad was able to get a job as a civil engineer using his degree from back home. And they're sort of just fighting their way through. And one day my dad said, we're going to start a business. We're going to live that American dream. So they got all the money my parents had saved up. My dad went to the bank and got a loan. To this day, he tells me he has no idea how or why they gave him the loan, but they did. That's amazing because every time I've gone to a bank as an entrepreneur for a loan, it's been <laughs> tough. Oh, yeah. I mean, Especially with software and consulting and no assets, you know, because those businesses don't have assets. Of course, right? and he had probably nothing to his name at that point. It was mm -hmm. a few years in the country, but... He figured it out and he got his way through. And so my parents started their first business, a cafe here in Houston. Cafes are super popular in Europe, so I said, let's start one here. My dad worked both jobs for a while. He was a civil engineer during the day, and then when he had the opportunity after work, he went straight over there and managed and sort of ran everything. And he did that for a few years. And it got to the point where the cafe started getting enough traction. That's where he said, you know what, I'm gonna leave the job and I'm gonna focus on this full time. And that's exactly what he did. And when he did that, it boomed. It ended up being a really popular spot in Houston, late 90s, early 2000s. What's the name? Cafe Europe. Okay. And so it ended up being a, a big hit in, in the area, big hit in Houston. And he, I guess that entrepreneurial mindset he had, he devoted it all to the cafe and started it. And from there, he ended up moving into more. He opened more cafes. He opened restaurants, all the service type industry. He went into it and became this businessman of sorts. And around the early 2000s is the time I was born. And so as I was born and I started growing up, this is the environment I was raised in. My dad would hold me by the hand, take me through these businesses. I'd watch him talk to customers, talk to employees, see the different ways he would handle different situations, sort of sh the path he would navigate to run these businesses and be successful in them. And like we were just talking about, as a child growing up, what's surrounding you is what defines you. And so I was sort of hard-coded into this business entrepreneur mindset. And growing up, I knew I was always going to do it. And I guess it just hit me a little earlier than I was expecting. 
And so here we are. Because you're in school for chemical engineering, not entrepreneurship. Correct. No. I Going through school, I'd always had a good sense of math and science, and I was always pretty good at chemistry. And looking at chemical engineering as a field, it's it's great. It's very versatile. And I always knew I wanted to make the transition into business, and I think chemical engineering has one of the highest rates of that. And so I knew chemical engineering would be a great degree to go after. And eventually I was going to go into business. But this opportunity came up, and I knew I wasn't going to pass up on it. I was going to follow my parents' footsteps and start my own business. Even if it was at 19 years old, we got it. And as for my partner, my partner Nico, the co-founder of Switchless with me, he is, he's amazing. He is the textbook definition of an engineer. If you were to open a dictionary and look up engineer, there'd probably be a picture of him in there. And you met him at A&M. Correct. Mm -hmm. So Nico, at the age of 10 years old, said, you know what? I'm going to be an electrical engineer. And at 10 years old, all on his own, no external forces, he started watching YouTube videos, started teaching himself how to be an electrical engineer from the very beginning steps to the most in-depth details of it all. He really started researching. I don't know how, but his parents let him go out and buy a solder. They let him start soldering circuit boards. They, he started on his own, making his own hardware equipment, really working on this stuff. And from the age of 10 and on, he really just learned electrical engineering to a point that probably most college-educated individuals don't. And so that gets us to the point where he's about 17, and that's where Switchless comes into his life. 17, now, I'm sorry. So just just wanted to understand, is uh, Switchless your first entrepreneurial project? Or Correct. Did, okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Nico, did, it's Nico's second. Nico okay. and his dad, they had a woodworking business. Nico took on woodworking in that time and really learned how to do everything pretty well and was able to make his own cutting boards and frames for different sort of anything wood related. He was able to do it. And him and his dad started that company together and ran it. But when it was time for Nico to go to college, they couldn't really move that business. And so they sort of put a halt on it. But um, yeah, going back to Nico and how Switchless got into his life, because Nico is the, the initial light switch was Nico's idea. And so at 17 years old, Nico, working on his project, said, I'm going to make an electric bike. So he did. He made all the components of it, put it all together, had this electric bike. And his girlfriend at the time wanted to try out the electric bike. So she went on a little test drive and broke it. <laughs> that girl is now his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> After that, Nico went back to the drawing board and said, maybe let's do, let's do a scooter instead, not an electric bike. And so he did an electric scooter, and he was working on the throttle of the scooter. Instead of having a traditional button or twist system, he said, I want to make a capacitive touch, like a touch screen sort of. And in his words, while he was doing that, developing the capacitive touch, he looked up and looked at a light switch and said, why don't I make that capacitive touch? And so his project shifted. He went from the electric scooter to the light switch and began building a capacitive touch light switch. He was able to get it done. He hard coded everything on his own. He was able to make the circuit boards, do it all together. And he had this light switch with a cool little light on the edge of it that was capacitive touch. But then he looked at it and said, well, this is cool, but it's just a light switch. So he wanted to pursue making it a smart switch. And so that's what he did. He started figuring out how to make it a smart switch through a chip in there that had Wi-Fi connectivity available on it, started making those connections, started coding it all. And this is around the time we both went to college. And so how fate had it, Nico and I got put in a general engineering course together our sophomore year. And how fate had it again, we got put in the same group for a group project. So sometime in that semester, Nico and I are sitting in the lobby of our uh, engineering complex at A&M. We're working, having some small talk. When Nico brings up this project he's working on, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, you could tell me more about it. Show me some pictures. So he starts telling me more about it. And the more he told me about it, the more intrigued I became. I started looking at it saying, this isn't just some small project. This is something serious. He told me more and more. And I was asking questions. He just kept giving me answers. He knew everything so well. He'd worked so hard on it to get to this point. And I remember the moment when it hit me in my head that, there's potential behind this product. There's potential for this to grow into something way bigger than what it is right now. I don't know what it is, but there's potential there. And not only potential in the product, but potential in him. Because to what he had done up to that point, the amount of work he had put in, the amount of knowledge he gained on his own, I saw that this was an individual who was special and I wanted to sort of continue this. And so Nico and I struck up a friendship over light switches. I mean, <laughs> as funny enough as that is. <laughs> So from there, we began talking, basically... The, uh, the light bulb went off, you could say. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, the light bulb went off. And so Nico and I ended up striking up a friendship, and we were talking every day about these light switches. I started going over to his house and to mine. I started helping him develop it and sort of give him a second perspective and a second eye on it. And 
the more we talked, the more we got into it, I think we saw any, the potential in each other, the potential in him to create a product and to grow a product that could be something really special and the potential in me to sort of lead this project together and get it to where it needs to be, his engineering and my entrepreneurial mindset. And so it got to a point where we said, you know what, we're going to start a company out of this. And so February 2023, we officially started Switchless. And from then on, it's it's been a crazy roller coaster. The product we had in that point of February 2023 does not resemble slightly the product we have today that we're manufacturing, that we're ready to manufacture. And it's been a roller coaster unlike any other, but I wouldn't want it any other way. So is this uh, effort supported by the university in any way, or is it just something you're doing out of your dorm room, or how does that work? It was not supported by the university. Mm -hmm. This is something Nico and I took up on our own. Obviously, me having the entrepreneurial mindset and knowing one day I wanted to own a business and being so passionate and motivated to do so, and especially with the project I found so much interest in, and Nico being the same way, having such a drive and passion to make this project he's working on, to make it something big, we found that within each other that was all we needed. We needed just our dedication and motivation to make this work, and it was more than enough to get us to this point. So what do, uh, what did you do uh, when you decided you wanted to start your business? Now, in my day, it meant going to a, somewhere to get like a printed out pamphlet about the difference between a sole proprietorship and a C corporation or something. Yeah. But, you know, um, when you decided to start the company, where did you go for, you know, how to do that or how to set up a business or any of that type of thing? So the very first thing we did when we started the company was had to run it by boss man, my dad. <laughs> so with him, we ended up making a presentation of sorts. We had a bunch of demos out, a bunch of paperwork, everything. I wanted to show my dad that I was dead serious about doing this. So we drove down to Houston and I sh we showed it all to him. And I didn't tell him what was going on. I just showed up one day and said, hey, let's meet at this time. He's like, okay. So I showed it all to him and he sat back and he said, I guess you're going to do this then. And so that was our initial start and our main source. He had entrepreneur himself, maybe not as a tech startup, but he understands it enough to the point where he's been phenomenal support for us. And so he was able to get us with his CPA. That's where we went to do all the business paperwork and officially start the business. Taxes, I asked my parents, I asked the CPA as well. And so they've been a tremendous help in this journey because they've done it. And a big thing my dad says, I've done it so you don't have to mess up on it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just, I'm leaning on him as a crutch for a lot of so it. So he's helping to mentor. Yeah, he's, he's he was our supportive. First I mean, because some parents, I mean, even Michael Dell tells the story about how he didn't really tell his parents. He was supposed to be going to college yeah. and started PCs Limited out of his dorm room, which later became Dell, uh -huh. um, but didn't really tell them right away anyway. And they, I don't, I'm not sure they were particularly pleased, at least in the beginning. But your parents were like, hey, son, aren't, aren't you going to college? What are you doing here? Well, the two biggest factors I would say to that is first, I told my parents when I was starting this. I promised them, and I'm dead serious. I was dead serious about it that I was getting my degree. Nothing would change. Switchless could make $100 million in revenue. By so senior year, I was going to get my degree, and that was that. And they had some comfort in hearing that. But I think the bigger part of it was when they saw how, when they when they saw that side of me, when I presented it all to them and showed them what I was working on, how passionate and how driven I was to make this something. My dad saw himself in me, and he knew there was no deterring that train. That it was just it was it had its path, and it was going that way. And so he was supportive of it. So it sounds like you understand the uh, the value of connections and and hustling. Yes. And, um, uh, and we met through uh, Shelly Brankman, who we've had on the podcast. Maybe talk a little bit about how you ended up meeting her and the impact she's had. Yeah, so Shelly is phenomenal. She is amazing, and I couldn't say enough great things about her. The way we met is she runs 1876 Ventures out of the Bryan College Station area. It is a startup support system, if you will. It is a, a, a firm that has a bunch of startups under their branch and they help them make the connections they need, make the next right moves and sort of just help them and guide them on that course. And so Shelly was having an investor pitch day in April and I was doing some research and I found it and I wanted in, I wanted Switchless in. And so what I did is I connected with her on LinkedIn. She connected back and I sent her a message saying, hey Shelly, I love what you do. I read into all of it. My name's Addis, this is Switchless and we want in. And at first, in her words, she wasn't. She didn't have too much hope in us, but she started asking us some questions. I had an answer for every question. We got on a meeting. Every single question, I had an answer for it, ticked them all down. And after our second meeting, she said, yeah, you're in. From that point on, she has just been a tremendous help for us. She's been able to help us get into that pitch competition where I made some valuable value connections with them, great people. 
She's also been able to help us as a support system. Anytime I've had a question about what I should do in this situation, how does this how does this pitch deck look? Where should I go here? Have a question about some paperwork. She has been there responding so fast, willing to help. Like it's it's no problem for her. She's even gotten us our first true advisor, Richard McDonald. He's a home builder up in Austin. He works uh, as a home builder and renovation for multi-million dollar homes. And she was able to connect us with him and he's acting as our first advisor for Switchless. And so she's been able to do so much for us in this short time span of two to three months. And she's just so willing to help. I can't say enough great things about her. And is she just doing this just because she's Shelly or? I think so. She yeah. loves what she does. She really does love, love what she do. I mean, with 1876, she does this for a lot of different startups. She acts as a guide for them. She had been through it herself. I mean, you talked to her. You saw she had been through the entrepreneurship herself, seen what it's like. And so mm -hmm. now she has this support system and this group in 1876 wants to help young entrepreneurs like myself. And I couldn't be, I can't say enough for how grateful I am to have her as part as a support system for Switchless. And you mentioned earlier that you've reached out to a lot of people over, That's correct. over time. And how many people actually respond? I've definitely reached out to a very large amount of different individuals, whether as, as a fundraising aspect, as a support aspect, as a mentor aspect. And if I had to put a percent on it, maybe a 3% response rate, and then oh, whatever Shelly is, percents of success. <laughs> because it is tough. And in today's age, with how accessible everything is, there's so many startups like my own who are reaching out to people. To these people, they're almost numbers on a page and maybe they'll see me or they'll see what Switchless is and they'll go, oh, college kids don't need that. And so it is hard to find the right connections. It is hard. I've been struggling with it as a founder myself. I reach out to so many people and they don't even open the message or they will and just leave it. Have you raised any money? Because that usually is a, a, a big concern for investors. Like, well, I'm, you know, you've got another year, year and a half of college left, right? We have not raised any external money. All the money that's been put into Switchless so far has been through me and my co-founder, Nico. Yeah. We both worked internships, worked jobs, took loans, took credit lines. We put a decent amount in, but we're at a point where we can't fund it ourselves anymore. And we were looking for that, for that first true seed round of investment to get us able to manufacture because our first two lines of products with Switchless are done, which I'll go into later, but they're completely ready for manufacturing. They're, we have done preliminary certification testing on them. They're ready to be manufactured. We just don't have the capital to do so as college students. And like you mentioned, there is a concern that since we are college students, people are going to go, oh, they have a year left in school. Like, what are they really going to do? And I would object to that full wholeheartedly. What we've been able to do as college students up till now, some startups never reach, and especially in the time we have reached. The team I have with my partner and the team we formed around us is exceptional. And with the right support system and hopefully eventual funding, the fact we're in college doesn't mean anything. We're going to make it work. Interesting. Have you identified a contract manufacturer yet, or how are you going to get your prototypes built? We do currently have manufacturing partners that we have an agreement with, and they've been extremely patient with us, thankfully. And they don't I don't think they realize we're in college, but they realize that we're serious at least. And, and so, where are they located? China. Okay. It is a big, uh, it's a, they manufacture for a few billion dollar companies. So we've been able to get in good contact with them. We have everything in place. It's just. A, How did you come across them? Nico did lots of research. Mm -hmm. Nico spent weeks on weeks on weeks doing research. We were able to get a bunch of factories, talk to all of them, narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down. So we came to these guys. They, they're, they're a big deal over there. They're legit. And so there are some concerns going over the seas, but for smart home products, we don't think there's a better place for manufacturing. And we've, we've done a great job in contacting them and really having extensive conversations with them. So now it's a matter of getting the investment in so we can immediately begin the manufacturing. Okay. So what does make the switchless switch unique? I mean, it's just, like you said, it's just a light switch. So what? That exactly, that's it, right? It's just a light switch, but switchless is so much more than a light switch. In one sentence, what switchless is, we've created a smart switch that can make any home a smart home. An analogy I could give to describe the impact this switch will have in the smart home market is with the development of phones. So your traditional just on off switches, those are like your old landline phones. All they do is call, you put a number in and make a phone call, that's it. Then the current smart switches on the market are like flip phones, your Nokia's, maybe your Blackberries. You could call, you can text to, they're mobile, they have a few more features, but at the end of the day, all they do is call. They're just still a phone. 
What Switchless has created is almost a smartphone of smart switches. It is a phone, it calls, but it is so much more to a point where they're almost uncomparable. And so what makes the Switch like that is that we have created a Switch that is a completely consolidated smart home product all in the light switch. Our Switch is smart lighting with sensor cluster embedded in that could get room specific data with ambient lighting that can act as nighttime aids and it's all built on a private local mesh network in your home. And so if you think of your home or any home, right? Think about the placement of light switches throughout that home. Every single room, whether that room is painted green or blue, whether it's a bedroom or a kitchen, there is going to be a light switch in that room. So if we make every single one of those light switches, not just a light switch, but a data point in that home, a data point that can control the lighting in that room, that can get any type of sensor data you want for that room, that can act as a mesh, as a point in the mesh network, you're creating a mesh network across a home that is so strong, that is so fast, that is, has the ability to optimize that entire home. You're making a system that's never been made for through the light switches. And so that's what makes Switchless special. Smart switches right now are just smart lighting. Switchless is smart home. What other sensors are you building into the switch then? Exactly. So I could get into a little more of the sensor cluster that we've built into the mm. switch. So obviously the switch is sort of that interior switch that wires into the wall. Switchless is no different than any other normal or smart switch on the market. Any electrician could wire it in. And that switch is sort of the brain that has the all the chips, that has the connectivity, that has the control system. That's that. But what we've created and patented technology is our smart cover plates, the very first on the market. Traditionally on switches, they have just a white plastic cover plate that goes on just to cover it and make it look pretty. What we have done is we have taken advantage of this cover plate and made that a embedded sensor cluster that connects back to the switch. And so now you have sensors in there, such as temperature, humidity, motion, and you can pick which sensors you have in the cover plate and connect it in and so then the cover plates are going to read that data and transmit it back to the switch, transmit it back to your phone and app. And what's special about the cover plates as well is they're modular. So let's say you have a cover plate in your home with Switchless that tells you the temperature and humidity. That would be our climate cover plate. But you say, I want this switch to be a motion detecting switch. I want it to light up every time I walk by it. You just pop that one out, pop in the motion cover plate, and then you have motion detection on that light without reinstalling the whole light for some other stuff. And so we have made a modular customizable design that gives you more functionality in your switch through the cover plate. And so then the big goal, what it's all gonna come out to is when you have that data in every single switch from the smart cover plates and it's transmitted all these different points back to your phone, it's gonna be able to connect and do stuff that hasn't been possible before. Automations for your entire home, depending on temperature, humidity, room specific, motion, all these different aspects that haven't been possible before. And if they were possible, it was through a system that's way too complicated and way too expensive to set up. And so that's sort of the use value of the sensors within our switch. Yeah, I imagine some of the pushback is like, well, of course the switch doesn't cost very much and who's gonna put in a, I don't know what your price point is, but, um, a, a, simil a similar technology would be when, when Nest was going to reinvent the thermostat. Right? Everyone was like, well, this is, thermostats have been around for a really long time. They're not very expensive. No one's going to spend 300 bucks on a thermostat. Well, it turns out that's not true. right? So, in fact, I've got three in my own home. right? And uh, I, I imagine, um, though, that I mean, there's a lot more switches in a house. And if you're going to put it everywhere... You know, it's a, it's just, it becomes a significant investment, right? It does become an investment. But what I would say to that is you're not investing just in the smart switch and the smart lighting. You're investing in a smart home solution. Mm. If you want to go and buy a smart home solution, a good one at that, it's going to cost you a lot of money and it's going to cost you a lot of complication to set up. And especially, currently, there's no easily accessible smart home solutions of the scale switchlesses for your average American to buy. And if there is, the connection between them is so unstable. And so you have one product from this company, one product from that company. They never connect. You're sitting there they're banging not, your head. They're not very good. I mean, I've, I've actually, you know, as you imagine, you know, being a geek myself, I've <laughs> tried to uh, experiment a little bit with the smart switches. Um, and I, I put like four for my entryway, right? But uh, I think they're from GE, but they're, they, they barely fit into the into the the box with all the wires and everything. And then because they are they generate heat, I mean, I think three out of four of them have, have failed 
exactly. already, you know, after like one year. And exactly. now that now I can't even turn my lights <laughs> on at all. They don't even divert back to like a normal, like a like a mechanical or something like that. And now I gotta get an electrician and replace switches and it's like there's just no way I would put those through my house because they're so unreliable. Exactly. And that's the that's the struggle most people have with not just smart switches, but smart home products. They're mm-hmm. unreliable, they're confusing, they're complicated to set up. And it doesn't have to be that way with switchless because we're making an all-in-one package. You don't need multiple sensors. You don't need multiple devices. You need our switch in your wall and all of them, not every single one in your house, but all of them will be able to connect to each other and make this mesh ecosystem that will control your whole home. And so it's a consolidated product that can do everything from there. And the best part, or one of the best parts about it, is we've created it on a completely local network. So the safety and privacy concerns are out the door. A lot of smart home products, they connect to some server somewhere and they leave your home vulnerable. But with Switchless, we've created it on a private local mesh network that doesn't that doesn't have a single point leaving the house. It all stays in the home. Is there a specific mesh network you chose? Or Thread. Is... Thread, no, okay. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Thread mesh network with a matter, lang- matter yeah. as a communication language. Yeah. So I think something similar, I think, especially for the home, was the Ring doorbell, which has been very famously rejected by all the sharks, right? And the guy went on and became a billionaire, and I think he even went to be on the show at some point yes, later, yes, right? Yes. You know, so because they're like, well, who's going to spend 300 bucks on a doorbell, like a video doorbell? Who needs a video doorbell? Well, <laughs> guess what? turns out everybody wants a video doorbell, right? And I think I was actually going to bring that up myself. Ring is the best example of a company that Switchless sort of parallels in that sense. When Ring came out, everyone said, why do I need a camera on my doorbell? No, no, I don't Plus need it. Plus the doorbell is like 29 cents, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, I was like, ding dong, you're done. Okay. I don't need you know, that. So why would I need a $300 device? Ex- right? Exactly. And they threw it all away. They didn't see the use value that Ring did. And so when they started seeing that use case, they went like that. And so that's the trajectory I know switches will be on. Because, of course, it's not obvious off the bat. Why do I need a temperature sensor in my light switch? I mean, those are two two products that shouldn't be with one another. But when you think of the use case, think of making every single room a data point that's completely localized, that could be optimized to eventually save energy. It's it's almost a no-brainer. Why hasn't it already been done? Well, plus uh, each of those locations, which, like you said, is in every room, has power to has, those locations. Has power, right? is in every room, is going to be there regardless. Mm. There's no external anything. If you wanted to put a switchless in here, you wouldn't even notice it. Mm. The only thing you would notice is the cool design on the wall. What brings another point, the switches as well, if you've seen pictures, they have that exterior lighting on them. That lighting is also controllable. You can set it to be as bright or as dim as you like. So they also act as nighttime aids. You have them around your house. Say you have one by the stairs and you have little kids. You make that thing as bright as it can and it'll illuminate the area so nobody trips and falls. But you have one in your bathroom and you just you can't find it in the middle of the night. You just put on a low brightness setting and you can find it. So when you get all these different points together, like I said, it is a a smartphone of sorts. It has all your apps and your camera and your Gmail. It has all of that in sorts. It has smart lighting for the whole home, ambient lighting, like I just mentioned, this data system that's going to be able to get data from every room. And once you're able to get that whole system, and it's going to be connected by our own smart hub that'll be coming out hopefully relatively soon. Once we're able to get the first investment in and get to that point, it'll be that'll be the connection point. Through that, it's going to be called the Switchless Core, our smart hub, and our app that's going to be connecting to the core. So it's something similar to like Smart Things Hub or something like that. Exactly. But first, there'll be no microphone on it. No mm-hmm. microphone. You control it from your phone. But secondly, what's going to be cool is it's going to make this mesh. And so you know about Thread. It's going to make this mesh system. And as there's a big push towards Thread products, a lot of newer products are going to be on Thread. We're going to be able to connect non-switchless products to connect over this mesh. This mesh is going to be so strong. It's going to have 20 to 40 points in the house with the switches. You'll be able to connect all your smart products over our mesh network and control them from the switchless app. And so we're creating this smart home mesh ecosystem that's gonna be completely localized in the house. All the data points are gonna be your switches that you can control and get data from. And then you're gonna be able to connect everything to it. So like you said, the Nest thermostat or any future thermostats that come out, you connect them all together and eventually there's gonna be a system in place where that thermostat through our ecosystem reads, bedroom one is 78 degrees and bedroom two is 72. Something's off. And it's gonna start making those changes and optimizing your home for you and on long term saving you money as well. And with the core, I can't talk about it yet, but we have a really, really cool idea that when we implement it, it's also going to be a big game changer in the smart industry. Well, hardware requires a lot of 
financing, although software's gotten a lot more expensive too. Yeah. I mean, one, one of the challenges that I had on our, some of the hardware products that, that we developed, it was, it turned out it was, wasn't the technology and developing the technology, it was actually getting the money together in order to build it, right? Yes. Because of, you know, especially with the minimum order quantities and things like that. All of a sudden, oh, well, if you want to, used to be, oh, you need to make 100,000 of these or 10,000 of these, and 10,000 times X is usually a lot of money, whether it's 25 or 50 or 100 bucks, you know, and you have to come up with that. So is this why you're trying to raise financing? Well, the development of the product is completely done. That's been financed by me and my partner, Nico. So we have multiple prototypes installed in my house and his. They're made he custom custom orders the circuit boards. He makes them all by himself in his room. 3D prints the parts, connects it all together, gets all the wiring done, and those are our prototypes ready to go. We have them installed in his place and mine. They worked flawlessly. Every time someone comes in, they go, what's that? I have to explain it all over again. But I wouldn't say the investment is needed for the development of the product. We've developed the product, and we've done extensive sort of consulting as well to make sure that it is in the specifications it needs. Even with UL, we have already gone through preliminary testing to make sure it will pass the UL certifications when we get to that point. So the, the investment isn't needed as much for the development, but as much for the manufacturing and the moving forward. As we begin manufacturing, the injection molding is going to cost a lot, and then the certifications are going to cost even more, and then the first batch is going to cost a lot, and then we need to start begin our marketing campaigns really pushed out there, and at that point, we just don't have it. And so for what it is, Nico and I have been able to invest a significant amount into this company, into the tens of thousands, but we're at a point where we, we our pockets are empty. Mm-hmm. And so it's time to get that, not not just an investor in, because of course we need the money to move forward, but that mentor, that guide in who could take us through the industry. I can say I'm hungry, I'm motivated, and I know I will do whatever it takes to make this company work. But at the end of the day, nothing trumps the experience somebody who's already been in this industry has. And so that's another big part that we're missing in this team to sort of move us forward. Well, getting a college degree is difficult. Senior year coming up, entrepreneurship is hard. I mean, how are you, how are you managing to do both at the same time? I would just have to say it's it's a almost a fear of being average. I I want to be something. I want to be more. I want to be successful, and nothing's going to stop me from it. And so, I'm going to make this happen one way or another. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to get it with a good GPA, and I'm going to make this company work. And it is hard. I, I don't really go out much. I have a bunch of late, late nights. I think last semester, actually, I went to bed before 3 a.m. maybe like four times. It's, it, it's, it's been a struggle. It, it's not that it hasn't been, but me and Nico and the team were sort of forming around us. We're just, we're just so motivated to make this work. It's, it's almost in my head. It's not, a, it's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. That I can't do anything else besides work as hard as I can to make it happen. And so... I couldn't tell you there's a method to the madness except just grit and just getting through it and just making it work. Well, they say uh, if you want something done, ask a busy person. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be us. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess th- thinking back, I, I was doing the same. I was going to college, had a family, working a job. Yeah. You know, and I mean, so, yeah, I listened to that podcast today that you mm-hmm. had when you were talking oh, about okay, it. Thanks. And so... I mean, so you understand what the struggle is like. You understand that there's a there's a level where you say, honestly, just screw everything else. I'm going to make this work. And that's the point we're at. And that's the point I'm at and will continue being at until this company is as successful as it can be. Mm. And I'm Are ready. you ready for that question when someone comes along and says, well, look, I'll give you $5 million, but you got to drop out? I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully I, that's not what will uh, happen. Although Peter Thiel is is giving people money to drop out of college, right? You know, so. Oh, to but, drop out of college, you yeah. mean? Oh, absolutely not. A hundred percent. I thought you meant drop out of the company. No. Oh, no. To drop, if anybody comes up to me with that question, answer is no. I made a promise to my dad. I'm fulfilling it. But I will tell you, I already have this plan in my head. Maybe, maybe I'll... I guess I could say it. When I get my degree, if Switchless is working how it is, I'm going to get that degree, put it in a frame, put it on his, put it on his desk, give it to him in his hand and leave. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to go make my company work. <laughs> well, that's a door opener usually. Well, I mean, I like the fact that, you, that you're committed and you made that commitment. I think that says something about your character. Right, you made a promise, and you're going to fulfill it, no matter what else happens. So. That, that was, that's what he wants for me, and I understand he wants the best for me. And 
God forbid Switch just doesn't work out. I need that. I need that backup. And so I have no problem at all finishing that degree out, getting it, especially because I'm so close just a year more. I can I can push. <laughs> I've struggled this much. I can struggle a little more. And so I'm ready to get that degree. But we'll see how much it gets into use once I once once we get that first round of investment. Mm -hmm. So Addis, knowing what you know um, about smart home technology and the developments that are coming up, I mean, what gets you most excited about it and how are you forging the future in Switchless? Well, what makes me excited is to give give this community, the smart, the smart home community is growing at a rate like never before. Uh, about 130 million homes in America, 61 million of them already have smart home technology and that number is just going up. It's giving this community the solution they very much needed. A few weeks ago, me and my dad were setting up the smart home thing in our house. I think it was a speaker system. And I was banging my head trying to figure it out, saying, why is this like this? And it doesn't just have to be speakers or smart switches. It has to, it's everything. It is, it's a mess currently. And so I'm excited to give the, the smart community, to give people everywhere the solution that's going to allow them to have a smart home system that's affordable for what it is. For all the value you're getting, it's affordable for your home. Easy to set up, easy to control private and local, which is a big deal in today's day and age. I don't want any of that data. We don't want any of that data. You keep it to yourself. We don't need it. And then this system that can optimize your home, automate your home, and save you money. It is this all-in-one just great system. We want to give homes everywhere the ability to have. It's that's That's what excites me. That's how I want to forge the future. I want to give homes everywhere the opportunity to be a smart home just by replacing the light switches. Well, I like it, and I agree 100%. I mean, you shouldn't have to be someone like you or me in order to set up some of this technology. <laughs> I feel sorry for people that aren't engineers yeah. for a lot of this stuff, or they have to call in you know, their family's you know, tech geek in order to actually get something set up and installed. So I think you're on the right path. Well, thanks for being on the show. Um, really interesting, and um, I'll, I'll definitely be watching Switchless and yourself grow. Uh, um, I think you have a bright future. I've got something for you here. Oh, awesome. Some rocket socks. So, <laughs> there we go. That's awesome. Ride that entrepreneurial rocket. Thank and, you so much. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Absolutely.